And a CNN exclusive for the first time, the man only previously known as employee number five in the Trump federal classified documents case is publicly going on the record about what he saw behind the scenes at Mar-a-Lago and how he ended up handling boxes of classified documents without even knowing it or having the clearance to do so. Trump employee number five is a man named Brian Butler. He has worked at Mar-a-Lago for 20 years. He wasn't just any regular employee, we should note. He handled the car service at Trump's Florida resort, often directly making sure that Donald Trump and all of his belongings were moved from place to place, meaning he saw moments and movements and heard conversations that are now part of special counsel Jack Smith's indictment of Donald Trump. CNN's Caitlin Collins and Caitlin Polance are breaking the story for us. And join us now, Caitlin Collins, let's start with you. So you sat down with Butler earlier today. What did he tell you? Yeah, Jake, Brian Butler may not be a, a household name, but he is someone who is a, a central figure in the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case because he worked for Donald Trump for the last 20 years, since he was 19 years old. And now he finds himself at the center of Jack Smith's indictment of the former president in the classified documents case and, and is privy to key parts of that testimony that we read through in those indictments. He provided a lot of that testimony to the special counsel's team about key moments that now will likely potentially go on trial as soon as this summer in this case. One of those, Jake, that you're about to listen to is, is a moment that we spoke about where Brian Butler told us about how he was uh, on this day in June 2022, not knowing what exactly he was doing, but he was asked to help load boxes, banker boxes, onto Trump's plane at his airport in Palm Beach, Florida, as the former president was set to go to New Jersey. Now, what he did not realize at the time that was happening then was Trump's team, his legal team, was meeting with members of the FBI at Mar-a-Lago after they had just performed a search of that storage room looking for classified documents, which we now know, based on the indictment, of course, that Evan Corcoran, Trump's attorney who was looking through those documents, Walt Nada and others had moved many boxes out of that room. Now, Brian Butler, who is known and referenced six times as Trump employee number five in the superseding indictment, was asked to help Walt Nada, who is Trump's body man turned co-defendant, load those documents onto the plane. Here's what he told us about that moment. And then what happened is Walt left before me, and he never goes directly to the plane. He's either in the motorcade or when he goes there with the boss, which the former president. And... I remember telling him he left the club with, I, I didn't know what he had in his vehicle, but he waited for me at a nearby business and I told him I would tell him when I was leaving Mar-a-Lago. So I left Mar-a-Lago, I texted him, hey, I'm on my way. He followed me, he pulled out and got behind me, we got to the airport, I ended up loading all the luggage I had and he had a bunch of boxes. You noticed that he had boxes? Oh yeah, they were the uh, boxes that were in the indictment, the white banker's boxes. That's what I remember loading. And did you have any time, any idea at the time that there was potentially U.S. national security secrets in those boxes? No clue. No, I had no clue. I mean, we were just taking them out of the Escalade, piling them up. I remember they were all stacked on top of each other, and then we're lifting them up to the pilots. How many Who, boxes was it? You know, they asked me in, in the interview, and I, I believe it was I, 10 to 15 is what I remember. I know, they I know being it was, the investigators. Correct. And when you look back on that now, what do you... Oh, well, I had no clue until um, probably the end of June. There was a few different things that happened that kind of opened my eyes to, you know, something's going on here. So you get that unusual request. Did you ever think to yourself, why were there so many boxes at Mar-a-Lago? You know, I... For me, I'm just thinking, ah, oh, the former president, he has a lot of stuff he likes to lug around with him. Um, I, I, I never would have thought it was anything like what we see Classified now. Classified documents. Yeah, I mean. Jake, it is just a, a remarkable moment. Caitlin Polence and I have been reporting on this story along with the rest of our team, but reporting on this story for, for so long. And in this moment, it is so remarkable to hear from someone who has not spoken publicly before but clearly, just by his proximity and his longstanding ties at the former president's club, was able to provide such valuable 
information to investigators about what was happening here while he, he himself, Jake, you know, was still piecing this all together behind the scenes. And Caitlin Polance, um, Butler quit his job at Mar-a-Lago in about, about a year and a half ago in, in late 2022. Why come forward to share his story now? He says that he just wants to tell the truth, Jake. That was one of the messages that came across loud and clear from Brian Butler when he was speaking to Caitlin Collins earlier today. One of the things that makes him so unique in this situation as a witness is that not only is he a witness, not only is he Trump employee five in that indictment, but he also is someone who is using a different lawyer to represent him in this case. He's refused to take any uh, possible lawyer that the Trump team could provide him and used someone he knew separately as his lawyer setting him apart. And now his reflection upon this, upon the past year, the FBI approached him in his driveway about a year ago, just this day. He's saying that Trump is dividing the nation. It's divided relationships he's had with others. And just now he's putting the puzzle pieces together here. And Caitlin Collins, did Mr. Mr. Butler say he felt any pressure at all from Trump or Mar-a-Lago or anyone affiliated with the former president to not cooperate with special counsel Jack Smith's team? It, it maybe not have been, it may not was as, as explicit as that, Jake, but what he felt pressure on was the attorney. And the reason this is so critical is there's a very clear divide when you look at this case of who has an attorney that is being paid by Trump world and who is paying for their own and the divergent paths that they have taken on this. Obviously, Carlos de Oliveira, who was his very close friend that Caitlin mentioned there, he has an attorney who is being paid for by Trump's world. He is someone who was indicted in that superseding indictment. And I should note that these two have not spoken since then. He was indicted in that for lying to federal investigators about what he knew and what he saw. Brian Butler, on the other hand, said that he faced repeated requests and attempts to try to keep him in that Trump fold when it came to having a Trump attorney them, uh, itself. And so I think that is a critical distinction here, Jake, as we've seen how people who, who leave this orbit and what happens to them. And one thing that I think is really important is this is just a regular person who was working at Mar-a-Lago for 20 years by happenstance of what he saw, what he witnessed, and what he was asked to do. He has become a witness in this investigation and had FBI investigators approach him and seek him out. And now he has spoken to them on multiple occasions. And as he told me today during this remarkable sit down that Caitlin Pollens and I had with him, he said that, yes, he is willing to testify if this goes to trial this summer. All right, Caitlin Collins and Caitlin Polans, thanks so much. And look for much more on this exclusive interview from Caitlin Collins in just a few hours on her show, The Source. It's tonight at 9 Eastern here on CNN. I want to bring in CNN senior legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Ellie Honig to discuss. Ellie, how important is this news? How important is Brian Butler's testimony for the special counsel's team building a case against Trump and his co-defendants? And was there any significant in what you heard him say just then? Yeah, Jake, so this type of witness is gold for prosecutors, and there's a few reasons for that. First of all, this person has insider access. He's literally inside the room, as Caitlin just laid out. He's there when boxes are being loaded onto the plane, and one of the challenges for prosecutors here is explaining exactly where these documents were moved and when and by whom, and this person can give us exactly why. Second of all, he's a person who appears to be unbiased. He doesn't seem to have any reason to have an ax to grind with Donald Trump. As Caitlin said, he's a long time, two decades long employee of Donald Trump and the Trump Organization. Just based on the snippet that we just saw, he does not appear to be angry or resentful towards Donald Trump. And finally, if you look at his testimony and you look at the indictment, he appears to be well-supported, corroborated by documents, by certain text chains that are referenced in the indictment, and by testimony of some of the defendants themselves, Walt Nauta and Carlos de Oliveira. So this is really the kind of witness that you want to build around as a prosecutor. So what's the basic worth of his testimony. He can establish the boxes came in. He was not told that they were valuable, had, you know, important state secrets in them, and he just treated them like anything else, and they were stored in common areas and not stored with any potential security. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I think it's also very damning, in particular, to Walt Nauta and Mr. De Oliveira, who are both defendants in this case, because they're directing him what to do with the boxes. And if you look at the indictment, Jake, 
This guy, Mr. Butler, who's referenced in the indictment as employee five, he's in the middle of other things, too. He's a witness primarily. But for example, when it comes time to try to check out the surveillance video, remember part of this case is that at one point Trump and the other defendants were trying to figure out what do we have on the surveillance video? Can we delete it? He overhears and he's part of conversations about that as well. So I think he's a multifaceted witness for prosecutors. And Butler describes multiple times he was offered uh, attorneys paid for by Trump or the or Trump organization. He says he was repeatedly told he could always go back and work for Trump as well as offered things such as free golf tickets. Could, could any of that be seen as attempts at witness tampering? So there is no independent charge of witness tampering in the indictment. However, that could still be very valuable information for prosecutors to use because the pattern is unmistakable. We've seen it again and again in this case, in other Trump investigations, that he and his organizations offer to pick up the legal bills, that they sort of dangle other potential rewards for people if they stay loyal. Now, it's hard to connect that directly in a way where it can be a charge, and we've not seen a charge here, but you can absolutely use that as a prosecutor to say, look, this is their motive. They're trying to keep people in the fold. They're trying to keep people from flipping against them.